Hello students, welcome to Study Bay Technologies and please find the details of uh, biology lecture held today at our coaching. So first point is like we are going to cover this chapter over the tissue. Now the point that comes in our mind is like what is tissue actually? So tissue is basically a group of uh, structurally and functionally similar or dissimilar cells which derive from common embryonic region is called as tissue. Now what is this uh, group of structurally and functionally similar or dissimilar means? Structurally means like if you look at your skin, right? The skin is made up of number of cells. So obviously there's structurally all the cells are of similar, uh, similar nature. Now, if we talk about uh, dissimilar nature, like your tissue, your uh, uh, skin is actually connected to some of your sense organs. So these sense organs are of, uh, you know, different uh, structure or they perform different functions. And so this kind of connectivity between your skin and between the cells of your skin and uh, between the cells of your sense organ relates to the dissimilar cells, right? So anyhow, this just a group or just a bunch of different cells forms something called as tissue. Now, this tissue can further be classified as animal tissue or plant tissue. Now we have four different classes for animal tissue. That is epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue, neural tissue or nervous tissue. And in case of plant tissues, we have either merismatic or permanent tissue. So now let's discuss all of these uh, classes one by one and see how we can differentiate all of them. So the first one is epithelial tissue. This epithelial tissue is simplest form of tissue and uh, all the lines, the cavities and surface of blood vessels and organs throughout the body are made up of epithelial tissue. Right? Like whatever your organs, your uh, blood vessels, so basic lining of those uh, organs is made up of epithelial tissue. Now this epithelial tissue actually makes lining of uh, elementary canal, blood vessel, and all the outer surface linings of your organs. This is always attached to the connective tissue by the basement membrane, and it has a single layer of cells which lie upon the basement membrane. This occurs on the absorptive surface as well as the secretory surface as well. Absorptive surface or secretory surface. Absorptive means like it is absorbing something and secretory means like it is releasing something. Right? What that something here? That something is basically the hormones. Okay? Now again these epithelial tissues can further be classified into squamous epithelium, columnar epithelium, cuboidal epithelium, and ciliated epithelium. Okay, so now let's discuss all of them one by one here. <clears throat> First one is squamous epithelium. So as you can see in the diagram over here at the right side of your screen, it has a layer of flat, thin, and scale-like cells with well appearance. That means you can clearly see the nucleus over here. It occurs in the alve alveoli of lung or Bowman's capsule of kidney. And this is also called as pavement epithelium. And the main objective of this tissue is to protect body parts from injury, germs or harmful chemicals. Okay. Now we have columnar epithelium. So these cells appear rectangular and polygonal in case of vertical and surface view. So vertical view, that means like a front view, if you look at this, you'll find it like uh, it's a kind of a rectangular structure. And if you take a top view of this, you'll find it as a polygon. Again, this happens or this uh, occurs within the layer of the stomach and intestine. They are glands and covering the glottis. The function is absorption and secretion once again. 
moving forward we have cuboidal epithelium which is basically cuboidal in shape with round nucleus this participates in absorption and secretion and excretion as well this actually provides the mechanical support okay mechanical support to the body now we have ciliated epithelium ciliated epithelium is like under which uh, columnar and cubical cells may be present within the ciliated epithelium and the cilia is basically a hair like a structure which is present on the free surface and the main job role of cilia is to prevent the backward movement of your mucus all right so the mucus should move in a single direction only the slide is in respiratory tract and uterus going forward now we have something called as connective tissue now connective tissues are the tissues that actually connect all the body tissues and organs right now many types of cells are embedded in intercellular fluid of the connective tissue and these are called as matrix okay and all the cells of the connective tissues except the blood cell secrete fibrous protein called as collagen or elastin which provides the strength and elasticity to the tissue so these are a couple of definitions that you are supposed to note it down now we can further classify these uh, connective tissues into either connective tissue proper fluid or vascular connective tissue or supportive or skeletal connective tissue so now let's discuss all of them one by one the first one is connective tissue proper this is identified by the presence of a soft matrix and this soft matrix is actually referred to as connective tissue proper right now this connective tissue proper have some specific classes first one is areolar tissue second one is adipose tissue third one is tendon and the last one is ligament okay so now let's talk about the areolar tissue first of all which is basically a simplest form of connective tissue and is distributed throughout the body under the skin and epithelia so you know the purpose of connective tissue is actually just to connect your uh, body or your uh, tissue parts to your uh, rest of the organs or rest of your body parts so areolar tissue is something which is actually present under the skin part here okay now so now this uh, again when uh, this is distributed throughout your body under the skin and uh, the functions of areolar tissue is to hold a skin to tissue which are present inside it right so as the aid grows like the areolar tissue gets weakened down so that's the reason like why uh, uh, skin sometimes hang for those uh, aged people it provides protection from the microbes as well as the toxins you know very well like in case of any micro which tries to enter through your skin it is a regular tissue which actually prevents your body it repairs the cells of the damaged tissue after an injury of course like uh, you know very well like uh, in case of uh, a regular tissue like which is one like in case if there is any cut or any wound in your uh, skin this is the regular tissue which builds across it and protects your or cover up your wound accordingly then we have adipose tissue the adipose tissue is formed by the aggregation of adipocytes and each adipocyte is nothing but just a fat droplet and the main objective of this adipose tissue is to regulate the body temperature as it serves as an insulator over there and another important aspect of this uh, adipose tissue is that it acts as a storehouse of fat okay 
Now the next one is tendon. Tendon is a very strong, dense tissue which connects muscles to the bones, which is again a very, very important part of your body. Right. Then ligament. Ligament, the joint bone to bone. You know very well that like you have different joints in your body. You have a knee joint, you have an elbow joint, right? So of course, like uh, in case of knee joint, whenever you bend your knee, your knee part or your knee bone get stretches. So how this get stretch? It is stretched due to the ligament, which is highly elastic and has more strength than a tendon, but contain very less amount of metal. This is a ligament actually, which helps us to move our joint as it helps in the movement and locomotion and provide the site for the muscle joining here. All right. You might have observed that most of the muscles are actually present near the, the uh, point where the joint, uh, bones are being joined over here. Okay. Now let's move to the next point that is fluid connective tissue or vascular tissue. So fluid connective tissue is something like uh, it has a plasma and specialized free cell which float in plasma. They do not have fibers and the most important and familiar example of fluid connective tissue is blood and lime. Right. So the vascular tissue plays a very important role in the defense and transportation of the body. Defense and transportation. I have just quoted an example of blood and lime. Now what is the most important purpose of blood? It to transport oxygen from your lungs to different body parts and to transport carbon dioxide from different body parts to lungs. This is what you have already studied in your junior classes. And another important aspect of the blood is to fight against diseases, right? So we have it fluid in the fluid connective tissue. We have plasma, we have RBC, we have WBC, we have platelets, and so on. So now let's discuss all of them one by one, and let's see how we can proceed on that. The first point that we are going to cover over here is blood. Blood is basically the transportation fluid. Of the body and it is very very essential part of your life the function of blood again as i have already quoted here that is to transport the oxygen and food materials in the form of nutrition right you have uh, you used to eat uh, food for vitamins for proteins for carbohydrates and so on right on being digested the required nutrition is being released from the given food item right and how this nutrition reaches to the body cell it is only because of the blood over there right after that it takes the waste material such as carbon dioxide from the tissues and release it to the lungs and other excretory organs right like if you take a breath and breathe a breathe in and breathe out within that interval of time your uh, blood takes oxygen from the lungs transport it to the entire cells of body structure and takes out the carbon dioxide simultaneously and sends it back to the lungs through where you just breathe out. So you can imagine how fast the entire mechanism is, right? Again, the blood is a specialized tissue and composed of many different kinds of cellular and matrix components such as plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. So you can see here that uh, in this uh, below test tube, I have a uh, sample of a blood. Here in uh, most part is there for plasma. Then we have a very small part of white blood cells or platelets and some more part in red blood cells. Okay. So now let's move to the, um, some more details. It's something about plasma. Now plasma is somewhere, it's a liquid structure where your blood cells or corp cells float and it contains both soluble and insoluble constituents here the soluble constituents are electrolytes your ions substances formed during metabolism hormones 
and vitamins. And the non-soluble constituents include albumins, fibrinogen, and enzymes. Okay, so just note it down in your notebook and understand, like, uh, learn them so that in case if anybody asks you about a soluble or insoluble component, you should be able to answer them. Moving ahead, something about the coffee soup. Coffee soups, or we can call them as um, uh, blood cells as well. So we can call it as the uh, red blood coffee soups. We can further call it as red blood cells. Or medically, we can call it as erythrocytes. Then we have white blood cells. Okay, it uh, might be a kind of a little bit spelling mistake. That is the white blood cells supposed to be there. And then we have a blood platelet. Now, RBC, a function of RBC, that is, uh, you can see here in this animation, like oxygen from lung, it is being absorbed by the red blood cell. This red blood cell is uh, carrying the oxygen over here, and further it mixes up with required components and sends it back to the body cells, right? Once the body uh, body cells get this uh, uh, required, uh, you know, oxygen, they release the carbon dioxide and which is further released back to the lung. So this is actually the uh, tissue which actually carry the oxygen for the production of energy with the reaction of food material. Okay. Then we have WBC, that is white blood corpuscles. The main objective of the white blood corpuscles is to fight against diseases and destroy the foreign body. You can see here they have a bacteria. We have WBC and RBC. You can see here how this WBC is actually chasing that bacteria. And it is going to, ultimately it is going to eat that particular WBC. All right. I would like to see that once again and you can go ahead and can see like how this WBC is actually chasing this. And finally, it will eat up this entire bacteria here, right? So in case if you fall ill, that means the count of your WBC is, uh, you know, getting lower down. And so what will happen? You have to take some medicine so that the count of your WBC should increase and so that you can come out of that particular disease prone scenario, right? Then we have blood platelets. The main objective of this blood platelets is to help in clotting of blood. You know very well, like if there is some wound or if there is some cut in your skin and some blood is coming out of that, after some time, there's, uh, uh, you know, uh, blood stop, stop flowing from there. That means these uh, platelets run towards the wounded site and they accumulate over there and stop the further flow of blood outside of your body. This is something called as clotting of the blood here, right? As you can see here, in this animation, we have a wound. And in this wound, all these blood clot uh, platelets are running towards to fill up the entire space. Well. Right? I hope this point is uh, very much clear to you. Next one is something as life. This life plays a very important role in the defense of immunity system of your body, right? You can see here that we have an antibody or we have an antigen over here and we have a lymphocyte. It is again going to destroy that particular antigen over there. Okay. Then we have something called as supportive tissue or skeletal tissue. The supportive tissues or the skeletal tissues are composed of very tough matrix or called as intercellular substances and form a framework for the protection of vital body organs. So what are those vital body organs? You know very well, your lungs, your brain. So lung is actually covered by a carrier system that's called as a rib. Right on the left figure you can see that. Of course, your brain, that's the most important part of your body. So here, this is actually prevented by the very hard structure that is called as a skull, right? 
So that's what uh, role of a supportive tissue. Then supportive tissues can be of two types. Number one, it may be cartilage, and number two, that may be bones. So cartilage is basically a semi-solid, rigid, flexible connective tissue, and is mainly composed of special type of cells known as chondrocyte. Okay, chondrocyte. Now about the bones. So these are hard and calcified tissues that is mainly composed of osteocytes, right? For the long bones, like the bones of your leg, like bones of your hands, they are hollow from inside and they are filled with something called as bone marrow. Okay. Now move to the next point. As something about cartilage. It's again, as I've already told you, that cartilage is basically a point where the joints are connected, right? So this is like it provides the flexibility to the body part and appear smooth as joint. So you can see the diagram over here, and you are supposed to draw it in your copy. Like it consists of chondrocytes, which has a nucleus, and lacuna, external part. Okay. Then. Here you can find the bone structure. The bone structure forms the internal skeleton of the vertebrate's body. Vertebrate means like those animals that have a backbone here. It gives a structural support and shape to the body. It provides the site for the muscle attachment and it gives protection to vital organs. That's what you have already seen here in the previous point. Right? Now you can see that your bone it consists of different nerves and uh, uh, articular cartilage and uh, there are some parts in the spongy bone as well, right? The long bones are filled with bone marrow and so on. Okay. Then we have something called as Harvestian system. This Harvestian system, it includes a series of capillaries and nerve fibers. And the concentric layers, concentric means less layers which are centered towards a, a single point. That means take a one center, and with that center, if you make multiple set of uh, circles, then those circles are called to be concentric, right? So in the uh, in this figure also, you can see that we have one point, and around which we have multiple set of circles. These are called as lamellae, and it's around the blood vessel and the nerve cells as well. Okay, now this is what uh, for today's session. In tomorrow's session, we will discuss some other tissues and we'll have some more details about the rest of the scenarios on that. Till then, have a nice time ahead and take a very good care of yourself. Bye bye.